Okay, uh, back here with uh, this HF Packer amplifier again. Uh, so we've uh, already kind of checked out the filter bank and we adjusted the bias on the MOSFETs. So those were two of the things that uh, I want to take a look at here. And the final thing that I'm doing for my friend Drew with this is going to be adding a switch uh, inside the amplifier, uh, right down in here. See that jumper that says CW? That jumper will switch the amplifier between you know CW mode and single sideband. So that means that you've got to take the cover off the amp and remove or put that jumper in place uh, to switch between those two modes. And really, what that changes is the uh, the release time of the amplifier. So uh, so rather than do that, uh, Drew asked if I could figure out a way to put a switch in the amplifier on the outside somewhere to take the place of that jumper. So. And looking over how much space is available, there's a, there isn't a whole lot of space available on this panel here. Uh, you know, there's certainly some space behind the panel right here, but I really don't want to have mount the switch right in the middle of where the printing is here. And getting it over here might get a little bit too close to uh, the RF connectors, so uh, that isn't really a good idea. So on this side, the only places where there's some space to put a switch that won't affect things too much is uh, maybe right here or right down in here. And looking back, let's uh, pull the amplifier switch, uh, excuse me, the filter board out of here. If we look at inside the amp, um, there's really going to be more room uh, down in this area here because that's going to come down you know, right over here in front of these relays. If I had decided to put the switch in this location here, it would really kind of get in the way of this part of the filter board. So I'm going to very carefully drill a hole right here, try to keep it in about in line with uh, where the switch is here so it looks nice, center it in here, and then uh, we'll wire that switch into uh, the CW jumper that's right there. So uh, anyway, we'll uh, kind of show you progress as we uh, go along. Okay, and uh, there we've got the hole drilled. Uh, it'll be just above the band select switch. I've got this uh, nice small little toggle switch that we're going to use and uh, that will fit uh, right in here and I'm going to mount it so it uh, switches side by side and that way it'll make it easy for me to put a label uh, on top of the amplifier right up here to show which direction is single sideband or CW. So uh, the next step is to uh, mount the switch and wire it in place. Now in order to mount the switch uh, easier and to wire it up easier, I did it uh, before I mounted it. So I soldered wires onto the switch, put uh, some heat shrink tubing on them, and these wires are actually coming off of uh, a little uh, you know, plug that fits onto the, uh, the little header posts that are uh, for the test jumper. So it'll make it easy to remove if we uh, decide we don't want it there and want to go back to the operation with the, uh, the jumpers. This happens to be a three position. Uh, block, but it's just one that I already had pre-wired and I uh, wasn't doing anything sitting in my junk box so I thought I'd put it to good use here in uh, the amplifier. Okay, and there's the uh, the switch uh, mounted in place and uh, the wiring uh, neatly bundles up with uh, the rest of the wiring here on this side of the amplifier board so we know it won't get in the way of the filter board or anything else uh, inside the amplifier. So the next thing to do is uh, button it all up and uh, check it out. Okay, so I just uh, got to put the uh, amplifier back together here. We'll take the uh, filter board and slip it back in place. Uh, the switch goes through the hole. And uh, we'll line up the screw holes back here and put these screws back into the uh, back of the filter board. There's two screws, one in, the, one in each corner in the back. And then... Uh, We'll mount the, uh, the nut back on the front of the uh, switch. Okay, so and then the nut goes back on the front of the switch here, and I'll go tighten that up properly with a, uh, a little socket I got to go dig out. And then uh, the two uh, connections back down to the main board. Uh, this is uh, to the amplifier input, and this one is to the amplifier output and they plug right back in the board there so that's all good to go. 
I just need to tighten that up, put the knob on, slip the cover on, and we're ready to test it all out. The amplifier is all put back together now. The CW and single sideband mode switch is installed. A label has been added on the top to indicate uh, which mode you're in uh, by switching the switch in either direction. So let's go check out its operation. The amplifier is connected to a battery. Uh, the input is coming from this ICOM 703 low power transmitter. I've got it in RTTY mode which will put out just an unmodulated CW carrier to test out the amp. The output of the amplifier is connected through this bird watt meter down into the dummy load down here. So I've got the amp turned on, I've got it in the online mode. Uh, so let's take a look at the release time of the amp in the two different modes. So in single sideband mode, I'll key the microphone here, and you'll be able to see the red LED will indicate how long the amplifier is on. So when I key up, the red LED comes on, and when I unkey, you can see it's about a second delay, a little bit less than a second or so. There again, it's on, and I unkey, and it goes off. And that hold time is good to allow uh, the amplifier to stay on between voice peaks uh, for single sideband operation. And uh, so it won't uh, chatter the relay so much uh, while you're speaking uh, in single sideband. Now for CW, you want it to release a lot faster, uh, especially for full break-in operation. So I switched over to CW mode. And you'll notice when I push the key, okay, the LED is on, I let go and it goes off very quickly. Let's do that again. On, off, on, off. So we can see it actually releases much quicker. So again, for good for a full break-in operation. Let's just go check, do a quick check of the power output uh, just to be sure everything's working good. Uh, so I've got the amplifier on. Uh, I'm running about uh, two and a half to three watts out of the uh, ICOM 703. And uh, if I key up here, we can actually see that uh, we're running at about 35 watts output on the meter. And just to take a quick look at how clean it is, go over to the spectrum analyzer here, and I'll key up. And I can see the fundamental, and then the second and third harmonics are both down, uh, you know, more than 40 dB down. So uh, the amplifier looks nice and clean. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that series on this HF Packer V4 amp. Uh, we swept the, uh, the filter bank and showed the, those characteristics. Um, we took a look at how to adjust the bias for the MOSFETs internally, and then how to add the uh, CW switch. So I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, thank you for watching.